Hi there, in this video we will talk about the technological progress and how we can include it in the production function. Because we know in the last century the technology has taken a lot of uplift and it has profoundly changed the production process as well as the production functions. We know that output has increased beyond the effects of the changes in inputs. Because when we talk about inputs we usually talk about capital and labor. But in addition to the effect of capital and labor there has been quite a bit of effect and that additional effect is attributed usually to the technological progress. So how we can incorporate this in our production function, let us see. Before we go ahead, just a reminder that if you are a new visitor to this channel, you may subscribe it so that you receive such novel material and you may also click the bell icon. So let's talk about this production function which is slightly unusual because we have introduced this term that is OT. O is standing for the other inputs and T is showing time. Because the function of capital and labor is something that we have seen before in the production functions, but this is something that is other factors that happen over time or improve over time. They are usually considered as the technological progress. O T is the effect of the other factors as already told. T is stands for time and the rate of change of this O T with respect to time is positive. It means that these factors will increase over time because the technology as we can observe by studying any law that is uh, Moore's law where the uh, processing ability uh, increases over time and even the network effects they increase over time. We have observed all of these technological upgradation over time and this is something that we can assume safely here that it will give rise to an increased um, input which is other than the usual input of capital and so how this effect can take place in a production function? There are basically three ways in which it can be incorporated in the production function. The first way is when it is equally uh, incorporated. That is, this OT affects the inputs equally. That is, it affects capital and labor equally. This is why this OT is being multiplied with the production function based upon capital and labor. And it affects both of them. Whereas if the labor is getting more of the effect, then it is a labor focused change in over time. This is why here we are writing capital as it is, but we are multiplying this OT with labor because it is showing its effect on the labor as it is labor focused. And if the capital is receiving the effect of this technological progress, then it is known as the capital focused technological progress and in this case you can see we are multiplying this or incorporating it with capital and labor is remaining as it is. So these are the three ways in which we can incorporate the technological progress in the production function. Now uh, how it can be determined? It gets determined by the needs of the society, what is suitable to any society. For example if uh, we talk about India and China, these are labor surplus economies. Here the labor should be focused upon and it should not be the other way around because if we overlook the importance of the labor input there will be uh, excessive unemployment in such labor surplus economies. So the need of the society is to be considered. Also the philosophy of orientation of progress is also to be incorporated in this decision. If our policy is to progress in such a way where high tech industries need to flourish then maybe the capital focused technological progress is suitable and the manual techniques might not be suitable which are on the side of the labor focused strategy. Now we have the impact of the other inputs versus the labor and capital. How we can incorporate this in an equation that should be related with the overall output. So this is the growth rate of the output and it gets determined by the growth rate of other inputs that is OT and the usual inputs that is capital and labor. Here you can see the same notations are explained. You can pause the video and see these notations. Now we further improve the understanding of these terms. That is by considering that this growth rate of the inputs is basically composed of labor and capital together. So here we have broken it into these two parts. However, we have also introduced the elasticities with these two growth rates. And this elasticity that is epsilon QL is basically the output elasticity of labor as the subscript riders QL and in case of this elasticity epsilon QK it is the output elasticity of capital. 
and how our group will change as the capital changes. Uh, the growth rate of uh, the other inputs uh, can be considered as the technological progress because this is in addition to capital and labor. So by incorporating these uh, substitutions, we can write uh, GTP here and instead of this GIN, I can write its value that we have developed. Now we can do a little numerical exercise in order to find out the rate of technological progress. And this is the country that we are talking about and its output is growing at 3.6% and there are other growth conditions given in this numerical example regarding the labor and capital. Here you can see that we are given this information regarding the growth of labor, growth of capital, output elasticity of labor and output elasticity of capital. So these numerical values are available and we are going to put them. This 3.6 was given in the lines uh, explained above. 3.6% was the growth rate of output. This is the growth rate of the technological progress that we want to find. So this is why we are keeping it as it is. And we have this uh, uh, couple of values that we have substituted in and another couple of values that we can substitute here. And let us simplify the situation by finding the answer. You can pause the video and you can verify if the answer is correct. So this is the answer. This is actually the growth rate of technological progress, which is 2.1%. So we are able to find out the growth rate of technological progress, which is definitely something very crucial in these days when the technological progress is happening all around us and is happening at a very uh, rapid pace. So this is how we can understand and numerically find out the rate of uh, technological progress. And we can do this with the help of a usual production function that is a calculus production function. I hope you have benefited from this video. You may like it. Thanks.